Hey guys, this is a, a video I'm going to put together for uh, changing the, uh, the drive belt on a Honda uh, push mower. This is actually a Honda HRX217 K5 VKAA is my model number. Um, there's plenty of videos on the internet on these things, but especially on the 217s, but what I found is the uh, depending on the dash number these things the configurations of how these are put together or made is all over the place it, it it's not the same the the housings for the uh, for the uh, the belt goes on I guess the smart drive some of them have smart drive which is a different hub on there the transmissions uh, they're different so I looked around on the internet and I found several videos that I managed to piece together to to get mine done but uh, I figured well I'm gonna go ahead since I'm gonna take this apart and uh, put one together and so there you have it um, so this thing is basically I've got all the gas drained out of it the uh, uh, it's, it's on its back right now uh, the spark plug is disconnected okay so as I said, I'm going to start with the blade first. These are 14 millimeter. Most everything you're going to need to do this is 14. There's some 12s and there's going to be some 10s. Pay attention to how your blades come off. Obviously they go a certain way. Um, this is a mulching blade set up here with the two blades like this. I just had this off, as a matter of fact, because I just sharpened them, the blades. But uh, these little humps right here, they're going to face out. They're going to face towards the ground. So, And they kind of stack. This has a little humps on there, too, again, and they fit in these little recessed deal here. There isn't really any other way that you can do it that... Is just natural you could force it on there but it's just not natural so like that they just it, it stacks and it sits in the grooves correctly uh, the next thing you want to take out is these bolts here these are I believe they're 12 um, this one this one you don't have to take out because they're not on these plates right here, so you don't have to worry about those. Okay, and as I said, these are 12 millimeter for these bolts here. You're gonna find that two of these bolts, matter of fact, I believe it's the two that I'm on right now, are longer than all the rest. So I don't know if you can screw that up because these bolts, I think, can only go in one spot, and that's right here. Okay. Then these other bolts. You can see those are real short. To get this out this piece here there's a bolt on the back side and I believe this is a 10 millimeter you get access to it through the chute in here that bolt right there is the back side of it so you have to rotate the the chute over to the mulch position 
Otherwise, this will be hidden and you won't be able to get access to it. There's going to be a nut. There's a washer. And then that's it. And then the bolt. And this will just come right off. Just like that. Nothing special. The bolt. And there's a there's kind of a standoff there. That actually fits right in that groove when you go to put this back together. Okay, this piece now, this will just come off. So remember, when we go to put this back together, this one actually has a bushing. None of the rest of this, or none of the rest of those did, but because it rides right on that. And we still don't have access to the belt because this one here, which we need to take off. So so this little arm comes off. You take that arm off, that's going to expose this pin. Now, in order to get that pin come out here, you're going to have to rotate that chute from underneath. Over towards the bag direction. See how it turned it now? So you can get it out of this little cutout there. Okay, so now this technically would come off, but now you still have a couple bolts holding it on. This one through there, and one over here behind the wheel. That one, the hidden one, I believe that's a 12. There's the bolt there. It's got a little little keyway that sits in a in a groove. That way it it can't uh, it's locked in place. It can't unscrew by itself. Okay, and then the last one is this one on the side over here. By the way, while we're sitting here, I'm taking this wheel off. If, because uh, I just had this off a few days ago. Um, if you're doing any kind of wheel um, maintenance, or you got these wheels off, put that washer back on. These wheels have. These bearings in here, mine had been on there. This mower is yeah, five years old, I guess. Um, for now, no, it's actually about three and a half years old. But uh, these little bearings, you can take a screwdriver and you can pop these right out. They're cheap little, uh, doesn't say it on this side, the other side, made in Taiwan. Um, and it just felt like gravel and everything else was going through there. And these things hardly spun at all. So. Um, I bought new ones. I think they were about a buck fifty for each one of these, each wheel. So you're talking eight bearings, because each one has two: one there, one there. Like I say, you can get a screwdriver under there, just pop it out, put the new one on, and just lightly uh, tap it in with a socket uh, on the outside diameter there, and uh, you can replace those wheel, uh, the bearings, as opposed to a whole new wheel. So.
Okay, so back to this thing. I believe it looks like probably a 10. Yep, it is. There's a sleeve that goes in there that you're going to have to pull out in order to get this off. Um, so I need to get a, probably a good screwdriver so I can pry at it from this side down in here, pull it out. Because otherwise, that sleeve goes all the way through. You can't pull this out. Okay, so here's a sleeve I was talking about that goes right into there and it just pulls pulls right out but it'll hold part of this in place so you won't be able to get it out without it okay so now this just pops off yeah probably been easier to at least loosen that bolt with the blade on obviously you can do it but okay there's my bolt so now mine's coming apart pretty easy yours may not because like I said I just had this apart and I've got anti seize and such in here so it's it's not uh, it's not all rusted from the elements and stuff. So now pulling this off, you may have issues trying to get yours off, but when you pull it off, there's gonna be on this side over here, pay attention to that, you've got this key and it goes in with the moon side shaped inwards. Not the other way, not like that. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, and it comes off just as easy as that. So that's the, uh, that's the guide, I guess, for this belt. Okay, so here's the part I really wanted to show because most of these videos on the internet don't really give you a close-up detail on this. And this is uh, why I struggled. Matter of fact, when I first took this apart from underneath, I couldn't tell exactly how to get access to the bolt. I took these out. Don't make that mistake. This is the transmission here. And even though this is a very simple uh, design, um, you take this off, the only thing that's in there is oil. And there's two gears. It's like a planetary gear. Um, two gears that rotate for the wheels to be able to turn. And that's, that's it. But if you take that off, oil is going to leak out of there everywhere. All it is basically is just a, it's a light. I put in... Uh, uh, 1040 uh, engine oil it's just a light it's nothing thick so but anyway um, this bracket down here I took this off you don't need to but I took it off just to get this all out of the way so you can see good access of how this comes apart so you're going to take these two bolts here that hold the the belt guide, so to speak. Once you have those off, because you can't get the belt off with this thing in the way, then basically you can rotate this and it doesn't just come off. You gotta kinda You 
you got to kind of yeah twist and work it out so there you go there's the old belt in my case this is a new belt but so if when you're putting it back on it's going to be the same principle and you just kind of have to snake it back through there try to pay attention as far as this side goes against here I guess not like that but uh, otherwise um, then you're just basically putting these back back on in reverse order this one I was able to do with a ratchet this one I had to do with a wrench because the pulley's in the way depending on your setup you got the spring now part of the spring so this basically this piece will mount back here there's two bolts to go through there so on the back side of this you've got this spring and then back here you've got a spring there as well and then you would have your like I say you don't have to take that off I just did it so that you can see kind of how those go together but then you have these two bolts that go through on the side here and these nuts that hold it in place now your belt um, so putting this thing back on if you don't pay attention to how it goes on obviously the cutout there has to fit in the groove but theoretically there's two different ways you could do it now if you did it like that that's not going to go down far enough so you're not going to be able to get the blade and everything else on correctly I don't believe so you don't want to make that mistake. Now, if you turn it around, looks like there's an S stamped on this side, but uh, then that goes down further, which is how you want it. So, so now, as far as getting the belt on, Just like that. Yeah, it doesn't look like it would go the other way, but basically it just rides in between those two lips there. The owner's manual, if you own this mower, you've probably seen the same thing as me. They do not cover this. They don't talk about it. They don't anything about doing this.
that. Okay, now the hub's going to go back on. And remember, we talked about this earlier. This side here, the moon side, is what goes in, not the other way. While you're keeping a finger on that so that that doesn't fall out. Just like that. Got it on the first hit. And your bolts go back in. I do have anti-seas on these. So this would be a good opportunity if you don't. You want to get some on there so that the next time you take this off. You saw how easy mine came off. Um, now, these two here are for the blades. We're not going to put those on yet because we need to get all this contraption back on. So, Okay, so putting this back together now. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is get this ring back in place. This is just going to slide in there. This is that uh, keyed bolt that I was talking about earlier that fits in here. This is actually the spacer, or not a spacer, more of a bushing. That goes in there. Our bolt, it's locked in place. You'll feel it when you actually do yours. Cut out there, but um, twelve millimeter. Okay, I'm not going to tighten it. I just have it in there, finger tight. This side over here now. Um, a 10 millimeter and that was that bushing now you see me put some grease on these bushings that's just to try to help put these back in and get them out easier next time just like that so it just slid right in there's a captured nut on the back side there. Okay, now that roll pin is going to go back in. Then our chute opener guide then our spacer plate there and that bushing I was talking about earlier goes right over the top of that and then this piece here and our bolt goes in now at this point you're going to want to rotate that back because we need to be able to get access to that bolt on the back side. So this is going to go in the mulch position. Be able to move the. Yep. 
Okay, that takes care of that piece. Um, now the, tr the rings can start going back on. These are those two longer bolts we talked about. And these actually go into the engine. You'll notice I have some anti-seize on these as well. Be a good time if you don't, you may want to put a little bit on there. Those are going to be 12 millimeter. And then same as these other ones over here, just go ahead and put those back together. So we got our bolts back on along here. We can go ahead and get our blades now back on. Remember they're stacked, the humps side out. If you haven't already, it's a good time to go ahead and sharpen them. I already sharpened mine, so. And also I've got anti-seize on these bolts as well. So if you don't, you may want to, that way it'll be easier next time you go to take these off. millimeter if you took these wheels off make sure you should have a wave washer and a flat washer behind it pretty much takes care of it um, I'm gonna cover the uh, the belt adjustment here okay so we got this thing back upright um, for the belt adjustment there's uh, there's a, basically what you're looking for is without the drive selected just the mower itself you should be able to roll forward which you can. You should not be able to roll back. Even I can. It's stiff, but I can't. Uh, I shouldn't be able to. So this is uh, 10 millimeter. So you'd bust the jam nut loose. This would be how it should be. It's locked. That's how it should be without engaging the drive. So now what they tell you to do is now to back this off one full turn And then you should not be able to to pull this backwards. Okay, it's starting to get stiff now but it's not locked up yet. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely getting stiff. Yeah. We're pretty close there. All right.
right, that's locked up. Now, now at this point, what they say to do is to go back eight full turns. So, there's one, seven, eight. New belt, that was quite a bit different than what I had on my old one. So you should be able to go back and forth with it. However, when you push the drive, it should lock up. And that's that's all there is to it. And of course, as you put in more, that should bring the handle out as well. So, and then the last thing you would probably do is you would start this up and you'd want to make sure that with no input on here, that this thing didn't start going by itself. That's it. So that's the belt replacement and the adjustment for a Honda uh, HR217. KV5 KAA. So hopefully this helps some of you guys out out there. Take care.